coins. What can you do with coins? Well, there's only one right answer, yeah? And that's building a Tesla coin. With this secondary, I'm gonna build a really powerful Tesla coin, but not a usual one. I'm not gonna talk about silicon parts that would switch my tank circuit. Oh no, I'm thinking of something much more insane. What I mean by this is a monster vacuum tube, the GU81M, a Soviet pentode rated for, well, one kilowatt. You don't actually know the real rating of this tube because the Soviet tubes are always have a lot of overdrive power. So here, you can draw kilowatts f from this tube, but you can do more or sometimes less depends on how efficient your circuits also operate. But now you may ask yourself, how are you gonna power a tube that needs a kilowatt of power and also a high voltage because it works by thermoionic emissions? Well, the answer is simple. Microwaves. Yes, you heard right. Your everyday kitchen device that is good at heating up your food and also generating some nice plasma balls also has some useful components in it when it comes to high voltage and vacuum tube technology. But those components aren't without any dangers. This is the microwave oven transformer. It generates a 2 kilovolt output and produces amps of current even at that high of a voltage. So you definitely don't want to touch this thing when it's running. Also, note that on the side here, there is a capacitor and, well, capacitors usually store charge. There is usually a 10 mega ohm resistor in parallel to it, so this charges, but it's no guarantee that these will work. And last thing, this is a magnetron, which generates the microwave in the microwave oven. And well, it seems to be safe if you don't run it, of course, but actually in some cases, there are beryllium insulators used in these things, mostly mixed into ceramics and these are just used to isolate from high voltage, but beryllium is a very toxic metal. You don't want to breathe this in. But the rarity of it increased over time since beryllium is also really expensive. And most switch to aluminum oxide, which is much more safer. But you still don't want to breathe it in anyway, so yeah, please don't mess with that magnetron. And now, let's disassemble.
After sampling the absolutely lethal power supply, I gonna start building the Tesla coil now. But first of all, I use the wattage tablet here as it was used in the microwave. But I added a second capacitor to the circuit because we need a ton of current. And so, let's get to building. Okay, the Tesla coil is now assembled and I added this top load here. It's a cookie box where I burned off the oxide layer because it didn't have the proper top load so I had to get a little creative. A couple notes about the setup. I used 40 turns on the primary and about 31 15 nanofarad capacitors in series and the feedback coil has around 17 turns and I also had to put this insulation right here because it wanted to jump from the feedback coil to the secondary top load and well the feedback is also just four of these capacitors and Two 40 watt bulbs and one 60 watt bulb, so we get a 140 watt grid leak resistor. And yeah, that's basically it. It's a pretty simple circuit, if you ask me. The most pain about it is tuning it, but after you hit the resonance, it is pretty reliable and works great. And yeah, I also put some of these caps here at my voltage doubler across the diode to protect it against RF currents that could easily destroy the diode and well, shorting the mod, which you don't want to happen. And well, let's see how the circuit runs. Okay, let's fire up the tube. So you can nicely see the heater and now I gonna give it power wait that's all this tiny arc oh wait I forgot to crank up the power yeah that's right it works flawlessly so now this time I crank down the lights and now let's see oh my gosh that tube is a light bulb well now you should see the arcs much better oh, those are huge and yeah of course you can do the classic tesla coil stuff if I crank it up even further, the effect should be much stronger. Yeah, as you can see. And yeah, this thing also pretty easily lights up a near bulb from, you know, well, pretty long distance. This is half power now. And well, yeah, it would go much further if I would crank up the power. Oh, it's really bright here. On the scope you can clearly see the electromagnetic radiation and 
how crazily big the field is. I mean it goes a pretty far distance. Here is that zone and here it's freaking completely out. Okay, let's try how it would look like near a plasma globe. Oh yeah, that's pretty cool. On camera it looks really blue, but it's actually more like a purple white. That's an interesting effect. If I touch it with my finger, there's a small arc to create it. Wow, that's so cool. Okay, now it's just standing here, so it should work just by cranking up the power. Yeah. Wow, that looks beautiful. And I can still touch it. That's so cool. Wow. I really wanted to try some different kinds of electrodes. So this is a graphite electrode. Let's see if there's much of a difference. That's insane. It's like, well, burning magnesium, yeah. This is a salt-tipped copper electrode. We should see some nice sodium yellow or orange in this case here. Yeah, yep, there it is. Oh, wow. That's looking insane. Oh, I don't want to get too close with my camera. But you can clearly sometimes see the orange-ish color in there. There's also a second kind of electrode that makes sodium yellow, which is glass or sodium dioxide. And yeah, the sodium in the glass should even color the arcs. Well, glass is typically not conductive, but if you heat it up, it forms a plasma channel, which is definitely conductive. To kickstart it, I put a small metal piece in there, so it should heat up the glass and then made, make it conduct. Yeah, that's definitely sodium yellow. Beautiful. Also, quite note, the current draw isn't actually that high. It peaks at 6 amps at full power, which is pretty efficient. I mean, expected it to peak out at 10 amps or worse. Well, I guess I really nicely hit the resonance here. Here's another sodium. Or, oh, well, glass electrode. She runs beautiful. Oh, this, that sound is crazy. Okay. Only drawing one kilowatt. Well, that's like the same amount your microwave oven draws. Maybe because it's the same supply. Okay, now let's try some aluminum foil. I don't really know what to expect. I've not tried this before. Oh, yeah, there's some uh, small blue flashes, but only at the breakout point. I also found this pretty interesting effect when using copper wool. There is some nice art breaks out, breakout points everywhere. Like this, that's so cool and kind of terrifying. Okay, I'm recording this on another day. That's why the lighting is now different. Yeah. Now the next experiment is a blue LED. Let's see if we can light it up with a single electro. And yeah, we definitely can. And also the electricity is flowing through it. Uh, 
and now it's okay that LED is definitely not happy let's see how the most complicated and probably dangerous plasma bulb looks like Wow, that's beautiful. Okay, let's try it again. Wow, I don't think the glass is gonna hold on long. Hmm, this is cool and all, but let me try getting the arcs even striking outside the bulb. Okay, and now put some aluminum foil at the top. Okay, let's try it. Oh, I can hear it. Here, yeah, there's a small discharge, but not... And that was my bulb. Okay, that's terrifying. We shot a hole in the bulb. And the glass shot here, I did not expect it to be that insane. And why would it explode? There's a vacuum in there. Hmm, I think the glass launched it somehow. Well, that's terrifying. Yeah, we should definitely not repeat that again. Well, since the bomb is now destroyed and the glass not under that much stress anymore, we could actually try that easily. I mean, yeah, I don't know if it's gonna explode again though, but the uh, heat is much more evenly distributed this time. I love how they shoot out of there and also are kind of white. Oh, it's shooting out of the glass. Oh yeah, it's melting. Oh gosh. I also got a new background so you can see the arcs much better. Wow, that's looking so beautiful. I can't end this video without sacrificing some old silicon stuff. I mean, yeah, these are voltage limited. This tube isn't. Take that stupid moss sets that died man this project was a lot of fun but everything has to come to an end i'm gonna upload the next cursed ideas i might get over time in the usual short section this longer video is something i don't really do usually and well that's actually my first time uploading such kind of video and also editing, recording and actually the biggest thing was talking for me. I've never really talked in a video before and I kind of have to say that I find it weird that's why I really don't like it but I guess if I repeat it a lot it should get much better you see I am stuttering and stuff but yeah I hope you still enjoyed the video and well until we see you again